Well, I bet your eyes lit up today when you saw the title average rate of change because that's right in our wheelhouse. We're very, very good at it. I think we're really good at interpreting functions, you know, that are presented as a graph, they're presented uh, as a table, and they could be presented as an equation that we like to call analytic. But today, I guess the, the kind of the side spin that I want to put on this topic and make today a really productive day is to investigate this idea of slope as a rate of change, which is really average rate of change. But it's just kind of looking at it from, you know, turning that idea around and looking at it from a different angle. So what are we going to get into today? We're going to kind of see two, two variations today. We're going, to, we're going to see some word problems today. And not, not, not a super heavy dose, but we're going to get into some, some, some word problems. And we're going to try to find the slope between, you know, two points based on that word problem. And most importantly to me is we're going to try to describe what that slope represents within the context of that story. And then before the day's over, though, we're also going to get into just some 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 grinders that I like to call where we're just going to, you know, really get into the algebra, the analytic side here and say, OK, here's a function. Can I find the average rate of change between these two points? Uh, can I find the average rate of change between these two points? So, again, what do we mean by slope as a rate of change? So earlier when we were really talking about slope exclusively, we said it's the ratio of the change in y compared to the corresponding change in x. And that's a lot of times where we say, hey, it's just, you know, delta y over delta x. And that's never going to change, no matter whether you're in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or, or AP Calculus or whatnot. It's always going to be the ratio of the change in y to the change in x. But what we really want to get at is slope describes how fast the y value is changing with respect to x. So if you have this really big slope, like four or five, that, that means y is changing really fast for every small incremental change in x. And now for a linear function, slope is interpreted as the rate of change of the dependent variable per unit change in the independent variable. Now your, your dependent variable is going to be your y, and the independent variable is going to be your x. So that third bullet is just a real wordy mouthful there, kind of a fancy way to describe, you know, what we've said in the first two bullets already. Okay, so our first example is we got a hot air balloon, and we've been tracking the altitude um, from the moment that it was first launched and left the ground. And so it's very, very, very common and traditional that your time frame is going to be your independent variable. So think of those as like your x's. And then the corresponding altitude is going to be your y value. So think of this as your first x and the 50 is going to be your first y. You can think of the 240 seconds as your second x and the 300 feet as your second y value. So the, if I go to set this up and find the slope, I'm thinking 300 minus 50 all over 240 minus 90. That's going to make, what, 250 over 150? We'll reduce that bear a little bit. That looks like um, maybe 5 thirds. Okay. Now, if we get into these units, remember the, the 300 minus the 50, those were measured in feet, and the 240 minus 90, those were measured in seconds. So this is 5 thirds. That's going to be feet per second. Okay, and now shifting gears here, I had just hit the pause button real quick and tried to type in my sentence so I didn't slow you down that way. But we want to describe what this slope means within the context. We want to draw that connection. So what we're, we want to describe here is, and again, a lot of times you're just going to kind of steal the language that you see right here in the beginning of the question. So we're going to say the altitude of that hot air balloon is increasing. Now, why increasing? Well, this number's positive. So anytime we got a positive rate, we know something's increasing. Increasing at an average rate of five-thirds feet per second. Now, again, average. So there's going to be some durations. You know, there's going to be some seconds where we increase more than five-thirds of a foot. And then there's going to be other seconds where we decrease or increase to less than five-thirds of a foot. But they all average out to be five-thirds per second. And again, we just included that time frame between 90 and 240 just to make it real, real nice. Okay, so let's continue cruising on. Again, here's probably the most, the, the deepest, most theoretical part we'll get into. We're going to talk about the average rate of change of a function. So if you have the graph of a function and it's not a straight line, 
then the average rate of change between any two points is simply the slope of the line containing those two points. And that line is called a secant line. Now this probably sounds really, really confusing and we're gonna to try to make your life a little bit easier here with a really nice drawing. So let's just pick some nonlinear function, shall we? Let's just pick some squirrely bear and we'll call this f of x. So we've got a non-straight line, a non-linear function. And we're gonna say, we're just gonna pick two random points here. Um, who should we pick? All right, let's let A be this bear right here. So there's your A, and the Y coordinate is F of A. Um, and we're just gonna pick another random one all the way over here, we'll call that B. And then his Y coordinate is F of B. All right, so now, oh boy, I'm not real good at drawing these lines on here, but we'll give it a whirl. Uh, oh no, that's not even a line. Hold on. All right, I got lucky. I, uh, I drew, got lucky. I drew one of my better lines. So what we're saying in, in in this verbiage up here at the top is that the average rate of change of function f between point A and point B is simply going to be the slope of this line right here. So you'll notice, I guess in theory, there are an infinite number of points on this curve when you consider all the decimal values that you could squeeze in between A and B. And every one of those points has its own unique slope. Some of the slopes are going to be greater than that pink line right here, and some are going to be less. And the average at the end of the day comes out to be that same as that secant line. So that's really all we got to do. So at the end of the day, the average rate of change is simply going to be f of b minus f of a because now because that measures your vertical change or your rise all over b minus a which measures your run it's the exact same thing as saying y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 we're just using slightly different notation but the concept does remain the same okay so let's see we're going to use the function f of x equals x squared real nice beginner function to kind of warm ourselves up with and so the average rate of change between 0 and 3, so we're thinking f of 3 minus f of 0, all over 3 minus 0. Now in this case, based on this particular function, if I substitute a 3 for that x, we're going to get a 9. Substituting a 0 makes 0. So if I clean that up, I'm just going to get 3 for the average rate of change. And I think that's going to make some intuitive sense here. If I was to graph y equals x squared, and let's say we've got, um, you know, here's 0, here's 3. The slope there is going to be a pretty steep 3. So I'm okay with that so far. All right, on to this next one. We want to do f of 4 minus f of negative 2 all over 4 minus negative 2. Now again, substituting a 4 into this function is going to make 16. Substituting a negative 2 is going to make positive 4. And on the bottom, 4 minus a negative 2 is going to make 6. 12 divided by 6 makes 2. So now there's my average rate of change. Does that seem reasonable? Well, let's draw our graph and see if that passes the smell test. So our negative 2 might be right here. Our 4 is going to be way up here. And the slope between those two points we're saying is positive 2. That seems reasonable. Seems real reasonable. All right. We got a slightly different function, but we're going to practice the same steps. So I'm going to do f of 9 minus f of 4 all over 9 minus 4. Now we do have a new function here. Oh, you know what? Let's be careful here. I don't want to say f. What should I be saying? I should be saying g now, not that it makes a big deal in the long run, but want to be proper, I guess. Substituting a 9 in for that x right there makes 3, and substituting a 4 makes 2. So I got 1 fifth for my slope. How about this bear? g of 16 minus g of 0, all over 16 minus 0. Substituting a 16 for x makes 4, and substituting a 0 makes 0. And 4 over 16 reduces to 1 fourth. So there's those slopes or average rates of change. 
All right, here's a quick little ninja tip that I like that's going to pay off when you get to bigger levels of math. The units, like we saw in the hot air balloon, I think it was, what was it, feet per second? Those units can tend to pile up and they get a little annoying because in math, we're so worried about the numbers that we tend to dismiss the units, okay? Those units are going to be very, very helpful as you build understanding in more complex problems. And basically, those units are always going to be the unit used to describe y per, emphasize that word per, the unit used to describe x. Whoopsie daisy, x. So if you go back to that earlier example, the hot air balloon, we used feet to describe y, and we used seconds to describe x. So at the end of the day, it was feet per second. We'll see if we can monitor those units as we finish up our last example here today. So the graph below models the number of new coronavirus cases represented by y versus the days since China's NHC started publishing daily reports on January 16th, which is measured in x. If anything, we can rest assured that these probably these numbers are not true. Anyway, find the average rate of change from day 5 to day 13 and include appropriate units. All right, interpret our answer within the context of the problem. Now, we're, we are going to have to do a little bit of estimating because especially at day 5, it's really hard to interpret the output value. So here's day 5, and uh, I'm trying to try to determine what the corresponding number of cases is going to be, I'm going to say about 300. I think that's about my safest because I'm thinking, you know, here's 1,000 and I think I'm less than half of that. So I'm going to go with about 300. If you know, if you said 400, I wouldn't argue with you, but I'm going to go with 300. All right. Now for my other point, day 13, we're going to track that better. That's going to put us right here at this red dot. And that looks like that's at a really nice, even 6,000. So let's go see if we can calculate that slope so I'm thinking 6,000 minus 300 all over, we're going to say day 13 minus day 5. Let's see what kind of calculations that give us. That's going to give us about 5,700 all over um, 8. Let's simplify that just a tick. So simplifying that just a little bit, I, got, I came down to 712.5. Um, depending on when you, you want to leave it as a fraction or a decimal. Now, the units on that, again, remember our last ninja tip there. We're thinking we want the units used to describe Y per unit used to describe X. So I'm going to simply say number of new cases per day. And let's see, I'm going to pause here and type a sentence real quick. So I think ultimately the key to writing our sentences as we interpret these is to be as specific as possible. Um, and I already see one thing that I left out that I'm going to try to correct here in a second. But again, and you can steal the, the verbiage or the phrases from, you know, the given graph and the given paragraph. So, you know, I try not to overtax myself or overstress myself. I just said the number of new cases reported by China's NHC since January 16. I'm basically just recopying this bottom phrase here. You know, now we're saying increase because, again, we got a positive answer at an average rate of 712.5 new cases per day. Of course, there are going to be some days that had more new cases, some days with less, but the average comes out to be about 712.5. The one thing I'd like to add there is to include, say, something like, um, you know, between day five and day 13 and now i've covered all my bases so hey thanks for hanging in there on a little bigger bear today hope you feel more confident than you did before you watch the video and good luck on our assignment